All right, all right, we're back in action, hopefully, and uh, we can we can resume. Mm-hmm. Cool. So so what about this hand? Let's see. Okay. Uh, looks like a three of a pot out of position from pot size, right? Okay, so let's like play the hand. It, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So the button opens 3x. So like I said, um, 3x something to look up for, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Um. And then we three bet because um, we have tens, and we are always like three betting the small blind. Should be, shouldn't be something new, but um, for players out there who don't know, like three betting small blind is just really good mm-hmm. compared to calling because um, a lot of the time we do get squeezed, um, and then when we do get squeezed, um, and even if the button folds and we do decide to continue, uh, we are out of position. Yeah. Um, and most of the time, like the big blind can really squeeze really wide, and um, and if we call preflop, we are still out of position against the button, and that's really something we don't want. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, just three betting here is just really standard. And facing a call, um, it's interesting. You know, first of all, his 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 call is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, his call is really interesting. I would say like he's he's a fish, and I think he's actually the same guy in the first hand. Um, the one with the one who bluffed like ace queen on like mm-hmm. the four card flush. Um, so yeah, um, but here what I was thinking was my size because I wanted to bet, I wanted to have a size where I only bet half pot, um, instead of one third because um, it felt like this was kind of the board where if I bet small, villain always had a strategy where he could call his whole range and then on the turn see what I do and then con- and then follow it up. Yeah, so, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like you know how we abuse. People you have like by... a lot of a lot of give ups on the turn, right? Yeah, right, right, mm-hmm. right. Because we abuse people by betting one third pot in position. Um, we abuse then... their game, not the actual people. Yeah, 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 yeah. The game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. yeah. Good. Uh-huh. Now, now that we have that clear. <laughs> so we do that. Um as the imposition player and the, yes. the big blind has to react right because it can mm. it has it knows that you know check raising is kind of um, compulsory at a certain frequency mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. calling a lot is part of the game um and then here we are you know when we are betting um and he's always calling uh we end up in the same position that we don't want to be in at the start where do we bet now um, on the turn or do we just check give up or do we like um, check raise or do we like check call so you see we have a bunch of options and you know when there there is a chance where uh on the turn we reach a, we reach a phase where we have like too many options mm-hmm. um, it's really tough to play against uh, uh it's really just tough for us to play um, but if let's say on the flop we bet half pot and you know he's playing a relatively face up range uh it could be easier to uh, play versus to... his continue yeah. range, absolutely. Right, right. right and right, you're right. also going to get raised a lot less. Right, right, right. And, like, you know, when you get raised here with, like, ace king of spades, right, you mm-hmm. know that it's kind of compulsory to continue um, after you bet small and get raised. Uh, but it's not fun, you know. Of course. Um, yeah. But would, so you, you, would half... you fold ace king of spades if you bet, like, half pot and then get raised? Uh, I would say, like, at this stack there, and at these stakes, I think, yeah, I could find the fold. All right. But if, let's say, um, I think what's interesting is that, you know, if you bet, like, this size, and you get raised to, like, $25, and you have ace, king of spades, I think shoving wouldn't be, like, terrible. Wow. Yeah. I think... Because... Uh, because, like, you know, he has a bunch of, like... Um, so if he's playing well on the button, um, the button is supposed to have a bunch of, like, jack eight, right? Um, jack mm-hmm. nine. So these are all hands like if you three bet uh, with, uh, suited one, with backdoors, right? Yeah, suited with okay. backdoors. So if you three bet, um, you know, let's say the MP player or the cutoff, um, they don't really have check it suited in there. They won't be. They shouldn't be calling check it suited. Um, but against the button is really different. Where you know he has when he check raises, um, yeah, sure he has a bunch of sets. Um, but he does have a lot of like backdoor flush draw stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, uh, but I I might be wrong. Uh, maybe shoving, you know, Ace King of Spades isn't the best one. Maybe shoving Ace King of Diamonds is the best one because you know you don't block any backdoor flush. Yeah, though. that's true, true. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I have to look into that, but I don't think it's something where I would strongly advocate people to do because you end up with, you know, a range where, um, you want to check raise, 
uh, you want you face check raise and then you have to have a shoving range and mm-hmm, then you have mm-hmm. bluff you have to have like a value shoving range, a plus yeah. shoving range and stuff. So I rather prefer like, you know, if I raise and I get re-raised, um, I either just have a calling or holding range. I think mm-hmm. it's just mm-hmm. like easier that way, you know. Um, so yeah, and I think like betting half pot just makes it easier. So like in general, when you're out of position, I would always say my general rule is to bet like half pot or like 60% pot because... So advocate um, a bigger size than conventional right. one-third right. pot. I- Unless, unless like the ball is something like two plus four, then it makes a lot of sense, right, to bet like one third because all our over pairs like dominate him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think like for fun, I actually made a simulation in the past. I didn't save this, but like uh, don't take my word for it. But if you have a ball like let's say two plus four, right, um, and let's say the turn was like a seven and the river was an eight, so like basically a dry ball where um over cards are like king. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. You can have a strategy in a small blind where you triple barrel every single hand in your three betting range, and it's all plus EV. Um, so wow. <laughs> you, yeah. So if you are a losing player, if you are a losing player in a small blind as a three better, all you need to do on dry boards is triple barrel. Just close your eyes, don't care what hand you have, and just triple barrel, and you end up as a winner. So um, do you mean do you mean triple barrel triple triple barrel jam river means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like. Yeah, bad flop, bad turn, and shove river. And then you'll be like a winning player overnight. Um, <laughs> so it's something interesting, but like it's not something, you know, you obviously do in the game. Um, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, we, you know, I wanted a bad half pot, I didn't. And then on the turn, I think, you know, as simplification, like I said, I always check back turns like this where, you know, he has more straights, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and he has more two pairs, like 10-9. Well, okay, we have 10-9 as well, but he has more 9-7, I would say. Um, okay. Yeah, and he still has pocket nines. Uh, whereas like I think in the small blind, if you play a uh, check bet strategy, I think nines is a check a lot. You know. Yeah, um, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I'd expect so that I would too. I would say um yeah just checking the turn is standard, and then when we face a half pot <laughs> bet on the river, um uh, actually I think this was a huge mistake for me. I think shoving here was like the right play. Um, like check jammy river I, actually. Do you? No, no. So, like, we call it the half pot bet, right? Mm-hmm. And then when we face a bet on the river, like 41 here, um, he has 27 left, and I feel like in that moment, I was really afraid of 8x, um, but I should have just shoved the river because I could have got so much value out of, like, all two pairs and, like, all yeah, sets. I see. I see what you say. You, yeah. you left him 27 behind, which you don't yeah. think you would have folded with right, any right, two right. pair. Right, right, right. I got you. Oh. Yeah, so I, I think, like, in general, I should have just shoved this river. Um, I shouldn't be too afraid of, like... Well, I should be afraid of King-Queen and some 8x, but in general, there's, like, so much value. By the way, to left. explain the check call on the turn, yeah, it's basically just because of your whole range that gets there and is just weaker in, like, um, range advantage, right? So, yeah. so you're kind of protecting the other parts of your range by just going check call here, even if the board is, like half the board is going to be really ugly. Yeah, I would say like I wouldn't want to on have the river, I mean. a check a check shoving range on a turn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just just to you know, like keep it simple. Uh, so yeah, but you could have a check shoving range like you know, with like some sets like five sevens, and then you have a bunch of like. Um, King Queen maybe and Queen Jack because you know if he, if villain had a hand like Ace Ten and he faced a check shove, I think Ace Ten wouldn't you know be really happy yeah. about calling a shove, right? Even um, though he so, yeah. kind of has to call it, right? Yeah, but it's just like per- your perceived strength is huge. Yeah, right, right. right. So you have a lot of over pairs and sets still. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, on the river, it's just like a shove, I think, for me. But on the turn, like you, I would you mean say, lead jam or just check raise? Um, shove like uh, check raise over yeah, his okay, like okay, bet. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it's actually kind of interesting because I think like if on the river, like um, you know, the runner was this bad, I think um, well against a decent opponent, um, not someone who has ace four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if he had a hand like ace ten, he would be checking a lot, right? If Absolutely. he had a hand like nines, uh, he might still be checking and I think like leading tens here would actually be pretty uh, a pretty good idea basically and like, your you size for leading is I would say like um, betting 25 would be pretty okay and is this a block bet or you're still calling his gem it's more of like um, I have to bet small because he doesn't have a bunch of hands that can call um, and then 
when he bluffs shoves, like it's always just a call because you know our hand is just so strong. And I All think right. like I think against a thinking rag, um, you know, if I bet something like twenty five, uh, my range will look a lot like um aces trying to get a cheap showdown. My range will look like a lot of queens trying to get a cheap showdown. And you know, if he has a hand like sevens, he would realize and say like, well, he his range look like looks like aces, therefore I shove. And then I snap call saying, oh, you know, I still do have some tens in my range that bets more on the river. Yeah. Yeah, so somewhat um some levels there, um, but I think like this is how the river should be played. Um, so yeah, um, so let's look into the simulation. Yeah. Um, so you know here we can see like apparently I was wrong about uh black ever having a checking range. Uh, mm -hmm. we should always bet apparently on ten seven five. And the big size. Yeah, and on like on the bigger side, so I think uh, you know, there I think there's like no need to note note lock. Um, I think it's quite clear like we should always bet this yeah. size. Uh, so yeah, um, so and and then let's say you know just for the sake of the the hand, uh, we we did decide to bet small, right? Um, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. let's say a lot of chance that we do bet small, and he called, right? Um, so he's calling range. You can see like uh. Wait, I have a Same. question. What is what is villain giving up on the flop? What's his folding range on the flop? Yeah, so he for, to, so to qualify. What's his minimum um, defense? It's <laughs> is like it a four? <laughs> it's like okay. so. So this is like the part where you can see how betting one third pot is actually quite stupid because he he, he calls like with deuces. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it becomes like wow, like um, you know, do I really want to bet eight dollars just to? Base a call and then have to decide again on the turn. And I then, and so. then, how does how does versus like two thirds work? What is he defending? Oh. Can we see? So I think against two thirds, yeah. he owes like thirty four percent. Yeah, so, he's still yeah. okay. Yeah, he's folding those bottom pairs, still calling mm -hmm. very infrequently. Yeah. Yeah, um, I see. I see. Okay. I thanks. think uh, I think what's interesting here is that if you watch like some high stakes poker, you can see how you know on this flop, it's really obvious it's um, better for the three better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of run out, so here there are two conditions that um, we can think about. The first one is that the ball is really dry and not connected, like so there is no straight, um, there is no flush, and yes. you know, everybody everybody has sets. Like the small blind has like some fives and sevens and tens as well. Um, so in terms of range, uh. Our equity is still higher than his. I think we, we can see that in like Range Explorer. Can can you can you? Um, yeah. I think I think uh, I think this is all you can see. So I don't really. Use yeah, that that, that graph. I was like looking at that graph. So I don't think it like so it doesn't. Oh, it like, doesn't compare ranges. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right, right. Against like the other player, it just tells you, you know, against like mm -hmm, this specific mm -hmm, hand, mm -hmm. like King Nine suited against his range specifically, like how well it does. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So not as great, I would say, at this spot. Um, but what I what I think is that over betting or just betting pot here is pretty good because the flop is a very favorable flop for us, right? Mm -hmm. We have every single over pair, every single set. Um, and we just wanna most of the time we are scared of runouts because every single card in the deck can be really detrimental for us. Um, any ace would kill our action for kings, queens, and jacks. Yeah. Um, so basically our middle, our high over pairs, um, any six, seven, eight, nine, we have to do a lot of checking, um, even a four. Um, the only cards that are great for us are like a three and a deuce and a five maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so in, so I would say like it makes a lot of sense for the small blind to be betting pot. Yeah, simplify um, the hand and just bet big. Right, right. And when you turn the hand into like a two street hand, right? You bet pot and then on the river you just like ship it. I mean on the turn you just ship it. Wow. Um, and it becomes really easy to play because um if you if you ship a hand it just becomes on like what are the best blockers to ship and like what hands have the best equity. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. so yeah, if yeah, you ship a, a it's hand a very simplified version of just three bet pot one oh one, right? So if you bet pot yeah. on flop, like turn is seventy five, you can just jam. Yeah. Yeah, you can just shove. And it's really hard for so Although we are betting big out of position, it's really hard for a villain to adjust. Um, because what can he do, right? Um, if yeah, he has position hand, doesn't like, matter that much anymore when yeah, he just shoves. Exactly. Exactly. Our range is so strong. It's um, so like, interesting. If he has King 10 here, I guarantee like he's calling, but he's, he's never going to be happy about it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so it's something to think about. Um, but I would say as you move higher, things like that you know, become really readable and it's easy to play against by higher stakes regs um, as compared to like betting small mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. 
people at low stakes still don't understand how to play, you know, well um against a small bet, you know. So if it was me here sitting in position, uh, when I face a small bet, I'm always calling. So it really doesn't matter um, what hand I have. Uh, if you bet small against me on this board, I'm always calling and then I'm going to see how you react on the turn because once yeah, you check... Yeah, you have so up. many, like, over cards that just, like, give up, especially on, like, Rainbow. Yeah. Y yeah. You don't have a lot of continues. You, you need to be, like, really, really good to, like, continue properly on, on yeah. like... Uh, like a deuce of uh, diamonds, you know, it's so hard. Right, right. So if you have a hand like Ace King and you don't turn any back doors, um, you know what are you gonna do, right? It's really tough. If you face a mm -hmm. big bet, but uh, you just you just gotta fold most of the time. Yeah, most so. opponents will just like not protect their checking range at all. Yeah. Precisely. After the yeah, after they check turn, you're just like in in value in like paradise. You're just in like folding folding mode. You know, like you you get so much yeah. fold equity. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. So, yeah, um, what I was curious about here was basically, should I check the turn with tens? Um, and if I do, should I check it with, you know, every single set as well? Um, because I think, mm. you know, it makes a lot of sense to be just like check pure checking on this turn yeah. because it's just so bad. Um, but apparently, Pio thinks like we should be... <laughs> You know, like half, it's kind of like half half where we should bet like half pot, um, half the time and just like check. Um, so this is the part where I uh, you really. I think EVs really, are like really... similar in like a lot of spots. Yeah, it's, it, this is really a good part where like you can just really simplify to either checking all the time and um like betting all the time. So mm -hmm. we we can do the same thing. Um, so now yeah, I'll no, no lock is... one and the other. You mean? Yeah. So it's like twenty, um, twenty one point something percent and then if we do this um we have 21.53 so it's really close right can can we uh, see like ev for like betting all the time too yeah sure so if we do the same thing um we do this and then we do this this and this um and we do this okay and then yeah, so Similar. the other one was slightly higher, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'd rather just, like, take the check line. And then, uh -huh. so so the next question becomes, like, if they are really... Okay, so they were quite similar, right? Um, What's harder to play against? Like, it's a check harder to play against or, like, a bet harder to play against? And if you ask me, I think if you are the out-of-position player, um, betting is the one that is really easy to react to because, you know, you are putting more money in the pot. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The villain has the chance to react. But as but if you check, um, you know, you are forcing him to make a decision where you know he has to bet or check, and it might be uncomfortable for him to yeah. bet when he, he you know he knows that he faces the threat of um, a shove from overpair um, when he has a hand like Ace Ten. So you know you force villain to make mistakes by like maybe not even betting Ace Ten, uh, maybe not even betting Ace Nine. Mm -hmm. um, eight, nine, stuff like that. So yeah, I think it, you need to spend more time. Look, uh, like I need to spend more time looking into this. But I, I would say like the general feel of it is that I think currently checking would be the superior play here. Yeah, I also insta check with like range on this turn because it's just yeah. like, really bad for us. So now that can we, we see? That, can we see like yeah. an aggregated report for like turns? Uh, for which one? The left one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is it this button? Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's okay. it. Is it. Is it on another screen? Is it calculating it? I actually have no idea. Uh, yeah, it's this thing. Oh, oh no, 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 right? it's not. Can, can, can close this. No, it's not this. Um, it's, uh, hold on. Uh, runouts aggregating, no, runouts CV comparison hotness. That's it. Oh, this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And, uh, no, no, leave it, leave it small because like, oh. it's, it's like way, way too big. Okay, okay perfect. Okay. And uh, click on strategy. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So we see like which turns were like less uh, like checking a lot more, which turns uh, were like betting a lot more. See, this is like strategy for like every turn. Okay, okay. Right, I you can actually you. like double click and you'll see like the solution for like each. Right. Um, ah, that's cool. I haven't used this before. Yeah, yeah. This this was implemented like a long time ago. So we see like on the cards that are like a ten and above, we're a lot more aggressive with our size. Yeah. Um. On on deuces, we're slightly betting more. Threes and fours, not that great. And another like a five is definitely definitely hits. Um. Sorry, it, it, I was gonna say yeah. 
No, five is like really, really aggressive too, because it pairs the board, so it gives us like ex some extra equity with like over pairs, I think. Yep, yep, yep. And that would probably be the reason. A nine is like so and so, and then yeah, on on, on bricks we're mostly checking, and I definitely recommend like check range. Yeah, I think like checking range is just better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right. So I'll don't lock it to a check. I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, you need oh, to that's... select the turn though. Hold on. You need to select oh. the proper turn. So you can either select it from here or from the table. Yeah, nine of diamonds, and now you can. Lock okay. It. So let's go here and go here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we checked, and you know, villain bets half pot. Um, so and we're actually surprisingly raising very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should. I think we have a lot of our over pairs, like kings and queens. I think it's a really standard shove here. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It's one of those hands where like you really don't want to get a call and then like let villain see a free card. Um, you know, if he has like a hand like queen jack, we just want him to make a mistake by just paying us off right right now. So, yeah. Um, I think nothing too special. I would say about the turn. Um, I, what was surprising to me was the frequency that we are shoving pocket tens. Um, I would think like pocket fives would be a shove more than pocket tens. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. But I guess but, I guess um, with tens you're kind of blocking calling range a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Precisely. So I'm not sure like why uh, we shove with pocket tens, but um, I guess it's something to think about. Um, and then yeah, like. As surprisingly, as the sets go lower, like mm. shove them less, except for like pocket sevens. So I'm not sure why. Uh, but I think in general, it's just like you can just mix and you know shove like half the time, um, and then not shove half the time, just call. Um, I think it's no big deal. So yeah. Um, you know, we so we decided to call with pocket tens. Mm -hmm. so, um, and the uh, the river was a uh, offsuit jack, and. So here's the interesting part where I was thinking about two things, like leading, right? Yeah. Um. So in the end, uh, I didn't lead, but if let's say you know villain were to bet small, um, I think yeah, shoving tens is like kind of compulsory. I would feel there's just too much value left mm -hmm. on the table. Mm -hmm. Um. It's it's surprising that we don't shove like sevens. I think. Oh. Do we? Okay, we don't. Okay. Oh wait, so we we, so we check and then when he bets, um, yeah, we don't shove sevens, um, yeah, so I guess like tens plus and like. But oh yeah, yeah eight eights is a straight. We don't shove sevens. We don't shove nines. Yeah. At all, it's like... it's so it's so close. You see, like nines and tens, are like yeah. it's it's right there, but tens is like full jam, and then nines is just just call. Yeah. Which is kind I of think, fun. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's like a big deal. I would say, I would say like in game, if I face a small bet on the river, I would still shove nines. I think, uh, most people aren't like capable of betting small with king queen here with a straight. I think most of them just go for val max value and just sh ship it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I would still shove nines. I think. Um, so yeah. Uh, I think another interesting thing that I was looking. Uh, was you know what if the river came an ace right because the ace is supposed to be a better card for us. You can also, by the way, you can also check like the hotness. Like if we ever lead rivers, yeah. So if you click on like that thing again, yeah, yeah exactly. And, then and strategy. Oh, I, I think I you have to select a river first, and then yeah, okay. You can like that. reopen it. I think you still have the last one open, and and that's okay. Yeah. See, we, yeah, okay. we lead we lead some rivers. Yeah. Like ace and especially a six. Yeah. Which is fun. So, and we jam some fives, I, I guess, with like over pairs. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I guess like leading an ace makes a lot of sense because, you know, we have like a, a bunch of, you know, ace king. Well, not. Well, yeah, we do have some, um, but we have a bunch of like ace seven. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Um, that you know will always face a check from like king ten, queen ten. Yeah, and just like leading here is just great. Um, and it's also it's also a really good card for just for us to just bluff. Right. 
Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Because the ace just hits our range better. Yeah, he doesn't um, have that many ace X's in his range when he plays that yeah, way. Yeah. The six was like su- slightly surprising, um, considering how like it also makes a straight. Um, yeah. Com- like with a jack, and I thought like jack and a six and a eight would be kind of the same, um, but apparently not. Mm-hmm, um. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, I think like it's just kind of. It's just kind of a weird spot, like nothing much to say there. Um, but I think we can entertain the idea of like just leading here, basically. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's all for this hand. If there's nothing else. Uh, I was actually wondering if um, like how how river looks like on on like um, hold on just a sec, cause I'm getting some uh. How do I close this? Give me a sec. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm getting. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I can just mute that. Oh. All right. Sorry about that. Just getting some messages yeah. on like oh. an app, and it was like ringing. Um, I think like I was just wondering how his betting range looked on the river. Ah, okay. So on, on the like jack, the, yeah, 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 on the jack. Okay. Um. So if we check, then he should be shoving, pretty much with a bunch of stuff. I think every. Yeah, his, his, I was wondering like the bluffs mostly, and I see like yeah. ace queen and king queen, like almost full. Yeah, but king queen is like the nuts, right? Oh yeah, king, yeah. Sorry about that. And and yeah. ace queen just like, yeah, it kind of blocks, some of the calling range. Yeah, I think. Like in general, if like you know, considering how like the three betters range, like if you think about the three betters range and the calling, the call three bet range, mm-hmm. um, if you don't have a pair here, I think like you're almost always bluffing. Um, and also, this it's... is this is what uh, I was actually looking for. Nines and sevens also get checked. Um. Yeah, yeah. Like sevens is pure. Yeah, I think. I think that's slightly too. I think it's like just too much value left on the table. Yeah. You like check sevens. Yeah. I think you still can get a lot of, you know, like jack ten to call, right? Uh huh. And even hand like uh, jack nine. Um, yeah, you have a bunch of these hands. Yeah, like probably nine, be seven. betting these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think I think you still can get them to call. So, yeah, you, st- you still have to bet seven. I mean, in these spots, I even see calls from, like, aces. <laughs> Fuck's sake. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't, like, not not bet a set here. And all, all, three better will almost never have an eight. Like, it's very, very hard in yeah. this spot. Yeah. Um, I think if, let's say, you bet. Um, I mean, aces is a clear four, right? I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But people just, like, sometimes just, like, hero. They think about, yeah. like, heroing. Kings is a hero, um, well, because... Um, this is versus, kind of like, the big size, too, yeah. Yeah, because, like, you block King Queen, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, uh, yeah, you have a bunch of, like, really weird calls, like King 9, uh, which is, like, um, apparently King 9 is better than Aces, yeah, which makes sense, I guess. Um, you really want him to have an Ace to be bluffing here. Yeah, like, blockers like, make sense here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You and want and him unblockers, have, yeah. Yeah. You really want him to have like a hand like a six and a queen and stuff like that. Um, and so sometimes we call sixes, which I find absolutely weird. Uh, I think it's more of like uh, <laughs> you call sixes because like polarization, like uh-huh. you're either up up against like air or you're up against like the wall. We call sixes with the diamond a lot more than sixes without yeah. the diamond. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I get why. Yeah, yeah, of course the flop doesn't have like the backdoor diamonds. Mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it makes sense, I guess. Some. Yeah, but I, I think like in game I would call aces before calling sixes. You know, like you wouldn't be able to think about it so thoroughly right right then. Um, so yeah. Uh yeah, but it's a slightly interesting hand I would say. Yeah, I agree. Ah, very nice. Right. Very nice. Okay. Uh, shall we go on to the next one? Yes. Okay. Let's see what's what's the next hand. Um. Can we, can we see it like bigger? Okay. Please. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. so this is actually one of those hands where it's really standard, but I think there is some value to like look into it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so 
we have a spot where you know we face a min raise and then there's a caller here so don't on this guy he's calling me in the cutoff would you so would you sometimes flat yeah. here um you mean against the mp in in this special oh, in this spot, spot? Um, with so um I'm, with nines would you sometimes flat here i would say or this if, is just a pure oh sure if you, uh, excluding the fact that you might have like a recreational behind whereas like you're incentivized flat I'll say that uh, uh, you'd want to, versus like only regs, do you have like pure squeeze here or not? Yeah, so my play, if I want to play, if I want to play a hand, mm -hmm. I, I would just like squeeze all the time. All right. Uh, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's just like to simplify. Uh, if I, if I call, um, well, yeah, that, so the only two things I would think about is, is the guy before me willing to pay any price. Uh, meaning, if I do squeeze, and if the MP player folds, is he gonna come along? Then you know, squeezing becomes better, right? Because yeah, I yeah, yeah, am yeah. in position, and I am. I have a such a crushing big... range compared to like his. Yeah, yeah, he's calling range. Um, so if if he does that, then that's good. Um, and obviously the players behind us can be like absolutely aggressive. Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. like just really bad. Um. Yeah, I don't like to get into a scenario where I face a squeeze and everyone falls and I'm on the button with nines and then I just call. I'll, mm -hmm. I, my range mm -hmm. looks really face up, I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I mean, in the past, I used to include like aces and kings here. So before like tree betting was like a big part of my strategy, uh, I think like I would occasionally like flat call some aces and kings at 400 NL. Um, to induce a squeeze from a small blind and a big blind, um, but I think at lower stakes this doesn't really happen very often. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, any comments on your like squeeze size? So normally uh, you three bet here to like seven bigs versus like the min raise, right? So I would do like three times of whatever his size is. So okay. normally if he yeah, so if he raised to three dollars, I would just raise to nine. Um, if he raises to two, then it'll be six. But um. You know, I decided to raise to like somewhere around eight because it's like three times always two bucks and then yeah, another no, two bucks I understood here. that. I understood that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, because of the you know like just just random like percentage buttons, mm -hmm, I just mm -hmm. pressed I pressed one, and then whatever was like closer to eight, I, I just picked that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so here against the four bet, um, I think it's slightly interesting because um, because my range is pure three bet, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I do want to have a range where calling four bets is okay, um, and just like five bet shoving. So I think it's something like worth looking into. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, so like yeah, before that, let's just like move on with the hand. So just, like just here, one on the... question from chat. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. do you size up out of position? Somebody asked. How much would yes. you squeeze out of position? So in position, I squeeze like three x, and then out of position, I squeeze like four x. So um, this this makes a lot of sense because when you squeeze 3x out of position it's actually the perfect price for the in position player to just qualify to call everything mm -hmm, um, so mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense from our shoes to 3 bet on um, 3x up there i think yeah. anywhere yeah. above 4x is like perfectly okay some people do 5x but i think and, and of course when you're squeezing you add the the call to just, your uh, yeah, yeah right 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 um but i think it's always so for me it's like the smaller size I can squeeze, the better because I just want a high stack to fart ratio to play against like every single player, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I can exploit my you know post swap advantage, right? Where I have a scenario where I can um, deploy more over bets, uh, more under bets, and just weird stuff that you know people can't counter. And you know if you if you think about it, if you three bet a size that's too big, you just face a tight range where it's just really it just sucks for you basically. Um, we have nines and get. Uh, if you raise big with nines and then you get four bet and then you can't call and then you have to fold nines and it kind of sucks when you could have just played nines in position, right? Um, yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. It would have just been better. Um, so yeah, here I think when he four bet to this size and I need like 29% odds, um, mm -hmm. I think calling becomes really close. Um, if he if he four bets to like, let's say 21, I would say it's a set call. But like once it goes like above 23, 24, I think um, I can't always be calling nines in my format range. I would mm -hmm, say mm -hmm. um, I do have to like. But you're all the one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you so you jammed. <laughs> I, I mean, you could. I think I think jamming is like 
You think well, maybe. if you roll a one, jamming nines here would be good? Um, like one percent. I think it's actually pretty good, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just but, for board so, coverage in all the pods. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think for fun because like you know this guy is like going to be so if this was like a raggish kind of game, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. this guy is going to be like four betting pretty wide because he knows that we are squeezing wide, right? Um, and then if he four bets wide because he knows that we are squeezing wide, and then we can shove wide, and then there's really nothing we can do about it. Um, so yeah, we could, but uh, it's not it's not like a play that I do really often. Okay, so let yeah. me just like load this up. Um. So the flop was. So this. One. Yeah. So, you know, like I was saying about um, like the pre-flop range. I would say my calling range would look something like this. Mhm. Mm um. You know where I squeeze occasionally with. So this is not like GTO. This is like my own range. Um, yeah. Where I squeeze, I squeeze something like this. I mean, I squeeze a bunch of stuff. Do you squeeze um, like, sixes in that spot? That's so interesting. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Because but wait, um, this is the call versus four bed range, right? Um, no, this is like my own. Call oh, this is the squeezing range. range. No, no, no. This is like the call versus four bed range. So, so, so what does the squeeze range look like? So when I squeeze, I would say, let's say somewhere something like this. Um, so because he is in, because okay, so I add a position because uh -huh. there's an extra number. So. You know, if it was just a button, like if it was just me and the MP player, I would squeeze this yeah. range, right? Yeah. Um, but because I have to be slightly tighter, um, mm -hmm. I would squeeze mm -hmm. something like this, um, right? And then you can see, like, uh, I squeeze like some sixes and some fives, definitely. Um, so yeah. Um, but you know, if you think about this range, like you can look at like pocket jacks, right, and tens, right? Yeah. Um, they are not hundred percent because um, this range advocates for some calling with jacks and tens, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so my my range would be like totally different. Where I have a range that looks more like I would say, um, this, this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this, and then like this, this. Well, maybe not this, this, and then when it starts to like be the suited aces, I dump these and this, and then my my squeezing range would look something like this. I would say, and then I could I could even like not squeeze seven six. And six five and five four, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, and three so fours. So I would three bet something like this. I would say I would squeeze something like this. Um, and then you know end up with the calling range just now. Where oh wait, sorry, my bad. I'm I'm supposed to like always be three bet. Yeah, so those are pure. I like I got that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like it's like it's like a pure kind of thing. Um, and then like the occasional like ace five, ace four suited stuff like that. Um, so we end up with a twelve percent range. Compared to the original seven percent, and this mm. is because like you know um, this seven percent is three betting, and then we have a calling range. So when we merge these two together, um, we should discount a certain percentage, and then we end up with the ranges now. Yeah. And then when when we get four bet, um, our range for continuing should look something like this. I would say, uh, at lower stakes to be slightly tighter. I would say maybe you know sevens plus. I mean, eight plus could be. You know, it's, it could be like a eighty percent continue, um, a hand like king jack suited, uh, king queen suited. Um, it could be like eighty percent, so we can play like mm -hmm. slightly tighter. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, and then like you know to simplify like sevens and below, we could like just call um, twenty percent. Yeah, um, so it's like it's really like um, you don't know how the range would look like, but it's kind of like imaginary, and you can really just like like guess and check kind of stuff. Uh, you can just do whatever you want. Um, it wouldn't be too bad, I would say. Um, so yeah. Or you can uh, just roll a one and jam. Yeah, you sure. could, you could. I would say, <laughs> like, so if we think about five betting, right? Um, you know, GTO thinks that we should be five bet shoving something like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh wait, so button versus like cutoff. Uh, button versus EP. So something like this, it's like pure ace king stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but if you if you think like you know he is four betting light because of that guy who limps, then, you know, maybe even shoving a pen like 10s plus, it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. So, nice. yeah. But I would say, like, calling in position is always better. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I think the hand looks really simple where we just call for bet and, you know, the flop is a great one for him, um, not for us. And on this flop, my yeah, thought... Yeah, it's really good for him. Super, yeah, super really huge. And... 
I was thinking like, you know, if I fold nines, it will be folding too much because I'm folding like fives plus to True. like sevens, True. right? And then I'm folding a bunch of ace jack because uh. when you when the pot becomes this big, um, you shouldn't be calling your suited um ace jacks even though they have like backdoor flush draws and like two over cards. Like shouldn't it's not you, actually. I was actually gonna ask that. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's like a really good call actually. Like um, so okay, so let's let's take a look at this. Um, so here when we you know when he bets here, um, you know, and we have a hand like. Ajax student, I feel like it's pretty close. Like you can see, it's a one, it's like ninety cents. So mm -hmm, like uh, mm -hmm, eighty cents. Mm -hmm. So it's like calling, calling is like eighty cents. Um, and the pot is sixty six dollars. So like out of these sixty six dollars, we are like kind of winning eighty cents. Yeah. Um, and it's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And like the other thing, the thing is, we have to consider his four betting range. Um, the four betting range I assigned for him was something like this. Um, and if you think about low six players, they aren't really gonna be four betting something like this. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I think um. You know, Ajax student becomes a really bad call um, if if this range gets like any tighter, basically. Um, so yeah. Uh, so for me personally, I would fold like um, all these like king queen suited, king jack suited, and like yep. uh, ace ten suited, ace jack suited. But I would like include um, ace queen suited and ace king there. Um, these hands just like just play better. Um, it's really easier, and uh. Yeah. Uh, Why do you so think it jams sevens though? By the way, it's kind of weird, right? It's yeah. just like one of the hands where they just jam. Um, it's like I really a mergey, yeah, mergey kind of, sort of bluff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of weird, like the shoving range. So therefore, I just think it would be better to like no lock the whole thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, wait, I think if you think about like the shoving range, um, you can see like eights is never shove, right? Um, yeah, it's the call. And then you have like um, so deuces and trees aren't really like part of our range. So honestly, when we call four bets on a button, I would just like ignore. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we shove, we are shoving sevens, jacks, and queens. And if you think about that, uh, when we shove and he calls with aces, aces beats our whole shoving range, and therefore shoving is just bad because it, our shoving range doesn't include like a single like value hand, you know. Where he can just call kings and aces, and he just always has us beat. Um, yeah. So unless you start shoving with sets, I would say like just uh not have a shoving range might be better. Um. So yeah. So the thing I wanted to figure out was that you know if I called flop, which I think was really standard. Um. You know how often should I be continuing if the turn comes a blank? Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was like thinking about too. Are you not know, not like like compelled to like super fold if he jumps turn? Because yeah, like, look, I I would consider calling if I knew my opponent was like Linus, okay? Because <laughs> he has enough bluffs in that spot. But most opponents do. like like I honestly I would hugely punt on this turn against my opponents because I know they fold like jacks and stuff in this spot. Like if yeah. if the turn comes like a five, right? I would jam any two on the turn in the spot because I just rep so much string, so much. String. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Exactly. So I overbluff those spots. So if, versus me, you should like you know, um, you know, call the like call the nines. But versus most opponents at this limit, I think you should fold. Yeah, precisely. So that was what I was thinking of, but um, I decided to peel, and obviously I get like the best turn. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he shoves and like I just call it off. But the thing is, like, uh, I think oh it was wow, of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. For you. yeah. So he shoved the turn and like, it's just like a snap call. But I think it was like interesting, um, you know, to look into, you know, how we should be playing the turn because mm -hmm. um, you know, Absolutely. when we call the flop nines is like kind of, um, a decent. So it's like a it's like a decent hand to be calling the flop, mm -hmm. um. And then, you know, on a, let's say, on a deuce, like, how often are we calling the shove? And, you know, nines apparently is, like, still a call. Um, not the best one, uh, but still a call. Um, so, yeah. Um, even hand, like, sixes and sevens are a call, uh, which is kind of weird. Um, so, I would say, uh, yeah, it's kind of, like, GTO-ish, but um, not great. Because if you think about his shoving range... Uh, you know, he's he's shoving with kings, queens, jacks, tens, and then the occasional like ace ten bluffs, even yeah. the non diamond ones. 
Um, and I'm quite sure, like Route Six players, they don't even three bet, they don't even four bet a ten suited, uh, and then jam it on the turn. Um, so I think nines becomes a really bad call. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. if we don't, if we don't like spike the nine, and my range for calling just becomes like, uh, just becomes like Jack's plus, um, and Pretty like the occasional, yeah, like the occasional like trap, um, you know. Uh, if I trap with aces and kings, which I I would like trap with aces here, I think it's really standard to call the four bet with aces. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much. Uh, I just yeah, love I to think... call four bet with aces, and then get <laughs> yeah, trip, tri- tri- trip trip kings boards, and I'm like, fuck, why, why, oh why do I still God. play poker? <laughs> <laughs> and they just like 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 pile it in with like ace king, and they're like 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 just just literally just pile it in. And then you can't get value from anything else, which is stupid. <laughs> but yeah, it's, you're you basically you call it four bet with aces. You're almost always bluff catching, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> SPI is just too slow. Well, um, then you, yeah, you just can't fold. Like no matter what. The yeah, no, I, know, I know, I know, I know. It's just like um, I'm just like ranting. I, I, ran yeah. bad. I ran bad for the last two days. I'm so sad. <laughs> oh really? Like, uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I I didn't cash almost any of the tournaments that I registered, so that's a pretty big hole. But I don't care because I'm 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 oh. I'm like cover. Up. I I'm overrolled for what I play. What's your oh, wallpaper, by the way? My wallpaper? Yes, I I kept seeing it. Mean, yeah. What does it say? The best way to predict the future is to create it. There you go. There you go, Chad. True crusher here. It, it kind of makes sense for poker, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. So, so uh, we do another hand, or yeah, you uh, yeah, out of time. Okay, let's like let's like go for one last one. Nice. Sure. Okay. Let let me like pick pick a better one. Um. All right. Okay. I I would I would say this this hand is pretty. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um. So here. You know, we raise on a button and we get three bet. I think Jack eight suited here is like the bottom of my calling range. I mean, Jack seven suited doesn't make sense, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, calling here sometimes is like pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, and what's then, your you know, what's your four bet bluffing range in this spot usually? I so if it was a small blind, I four bet like really wide. But against the big blind, I tend I tend to like tighten up. The big blind so is that, generally tighter in like three betting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if let's say I'm more uh, polarized. So if let's say like the original like GTO range is something like this. Okay, so the the first thing is that you know the button is supposed to be three bet four betting like off suit hands because there's just so much incentive like calling, um the suited ones. So this is like one of those special spots where if you mm-hmm. are in position and you are four betting or uh, you four bet the off suit ones. But if you are out of position, then you are always like four betting the suited ones, right? Um so this is like one special thing. Mm-hmm. Uh and then I would never be four betting this wide. I would say because the big blind is never three betting wide enough. Um, the big blind should be three betting something like this, but nobody is capable no of this. Way, no way, yeah, no. Yeah, no way. So yeah, I always say it. I always tell my students, like, nobody is capable of doing this. And even if you do play low stakes and someone is capable of doing this, play with him all the time because I guarantee you no big blind is going to play check seven suited for draw perfectly. You know, of course. Of course. Yeah. Especially with this wide of a range. Precisely. Um. So yeah, um, when it comes to four bet, I think I think I would just dump all these and then these and like uh, I would say these and then like even a hand like king ten off and queen jack off and mm-hmm. uh yeah and these yeah so my four betting range would just look something like this I would say even tens I think it would just be a pure call uh yeah and then it would just end up something like this which is like three point six percent. Um, compared to the original 4.29%, which I think it's like it's decent, right? I cut like 25%. Um, so yeah. Um, and so what? Okay, so what was going on? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Thank. You. Okay. Okay. So we call and we face one third bet, uh, which I think is fine. I mean, it's just standard to be calling here. Mm-hmm. I think check raising here is kind of attractive as well. Um, in some sense, we do have a weak check. Um, it's one of those hands where you know if we check raise and face the shelf, we can just fold. Um, and we do want to get a lot of value from you know like ace king and ace queen. Like we don't want to give them a cheap turn. So I think uh, it's something interesting to think about, like check raising here. Um, but yeah, considering how the big blinds range is really tight, then maybe not. Uh, but we hit like a super good turn. 
Um, so what I was interested in is, you know, how often, first of all, how often villains should be betting on this turn? And, you know, and do we just bet, like, all the time? Because, like, you know, this turn is just, like, fantastic for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, he calls, and then the river is What just about like the dead. size on the turn? Yeah, so I want You bet like this so that you can bet, like, wider? So Are we not want... super polar here, or like not so much? I think I'm never I'm never polar here. Okay. So I'm never betting I'm never betting like twenty five bucks. So you're and... betting like ten x two a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I really want to like get value from. So if I had a, a hand like nine x right, yeah, I think it would be really fun to just bet like ten dollars and get Ace King to call. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like compulsory for Ace King to call. I feel um against like a ten dollar bet, um. But even though we both play perfectly, where I bet small and he calls perfectly, um, the river is going to be really hard for him to play, you know, um, with Ace King. So yeah, um, so I do think like betting small is like standard for me here. Um, I wouldn't bet like big because when when I bet big, I think my hand becomes very clear, like a clear C one or C three, where yeah. I either have Jack X or like a kind of like a flush draw kind of hand. Um, and I just want to be betting with like a lot of bluffs here. Like, could you explain just... to chat because I don't know if they know the C C one two three okay. four notation. Okay, so C ones C ones are like your strongest hands. Um, and you know these are hands where you should be really looking to build a pot with. And then your C two hands are like your marginal hands, like your mm -hmm. you know your your second pair, your third pair, even sometimes ace highs are like C twos. Um. And so it all depends on range as well. Uh, many of C trees are your just your draws, like your flush draws, your gut shots and stuff. And then your C fours are your air hands. So the interesting thing, you know, that people don't talk about when it comes to the category rules, are uh, like you know when you talk about C one, is it is it like a high C one or low C one? That's the first thing. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what and how what is the probability of having a run out that would turn a C1 into a C2. Um, so an example would be like if the board was King 9-3 yeah. and you had Ace-King, Ace right? Um, Ace-King is a very strong C1, but it's also a C1 where the probability of a bad run out is low because any turn would be kind of okay, except like 10 Queen Jack on King 9-3. Um, whereas if let's say you had Ace-King on King 9-8 and it is a C1, but it's a high probability there's a high probability of a bad right now. Um, mm -hmm. so, so therefore, you know, this C1 can be regarded as, you know, a high C2 or a low C1. Um, and, and both are fine. Um, so it's kind of like those things where it's a high C1 for now, sure, but then like it's going to be a... It's, there's a high chance it's going to be a C2, basically. Um, so yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, so for those who don't know, I think... Um, categorizing your hands are a really good way to start with poker because um, you know sometimes players don't know why they're betting. Um, they just they just bet for no reason, and then you know they you gotta ask yourself like whether you know it's a C one. Uh, if it's a C two, like you know, are you why are you betting? And if you are betting, is it because you're getting value or is it for like balance purposes? So like one interesting thing I always talk about in class is. You know, if on King 9-3, you never ever bet 9x because you think it's a C2 and you auto-checked, um, then it's really easy for a villain to start over-betting if a 9 comes on the turn. Yeah, for sure. So therefore, like, we have to have some 9x in there. Be and, like, best with the better kicker in general. Right, right, right. So, like, these things, like, obviously matter. Um, and, you know, if you have a hand, like, um, let's say 9x with, like, 9-10, uh, where the 10 blocks some straight draws on King 9-3, um, then you might just generate some, like, full equity right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, right? Because the 10x blocks, like, King 10, blocks, like, Queen 10, and 10 jack. These hands are all two overcards to you. Yeah. As well as a straight draw. So, full equity matters uh, when you bet with, like, some C2 hands. Um, so, yeah, these are all things to think about um, that I feel like a lot of people don't talk enough about. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Is it, was it I a good explanation? Perfect explanation. I also think that... Uh, the best way to think about it is, for example, with the exact spot that you said, higher kicker hands, sec higher kicker second pair gets bet more, and then second second kicker gets bet slightly less. 
third kicker slightly less, almost fourth kicker, which would be what, like 10 9? Almost never, but still like a little bit, right? The lower the kicker, the less you bet. Because if the turn is also a three, uh, a nine, we get to stack his trips. And that's like huge, huge value for like, like yeah. kicker war. It's really good. Yeah, for sure. But you uh, almost always sometimes just check it back, like in a like, small frequency with like higher kickers, higher frequency with low ki lower kickers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want, you know, if you feel like it's really hard, then, you know, just think about whether it's better to just always check on the flop, you know? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You can have a 100%, you know, check range, and I think it's, you know, nobody can ever fault you for that. Um, but it's about, you know, when you have a 100% check range, how do you react to a bet? You know? Because if you react the same way as when you had a back bet and check range, then you're playing it wrongly. You should definitely have more check raising, right? Yeah, um, of course. You had. Yeah, so it's about like reaction, and if you get if you have the right reaction, it really really doesn't matter whether you know whether you're betting ace king or not on the flop. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we also have a question in chat. I think it's a slightly too broad, but I think it's a good question still. With C two mm -hmm. marginal hands on the turn, do you usually bet smaller for thin value with good blockers, or check and then bigger with C one and C three? I think that depends mostly on your range. I'm gonna take this one mostly. Uh, mm -hmm. I think then check to protect your checking range a lot and then go bigger with like c1 and c3 mostly yeah um because thin value is really really exploitable especially in that spot right do you agree with that yeah i think um you can't just question. like go thin with like your marginal hands because then a perspective a, a perceptive opponent will just like you know like you're yeah. not supposed to have like a small bet size here what are you doing you're just playing your hand I would say like if you are so right now you are thinking of a strategy that is more complex than like pros at five five hundred NL mm -hmm. because when you do this um you have two sizes on the 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 flop right and then because you had two sizes um on the flop then the third there are four possibilities on the turn and then you times two again and then there are eight possibilities on the river. Mm -hmm. Um, so because of this, you complicated your strategy a lot, um, and then your your strategy is also exploitable in a sense where you choose your size based on your, the value of your hand. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's so exactly I'm, my point. Yeah. yeah. So specifically saying, it's like not a bad strategy if you can execute it perfectly, but it's a really, it's hard, really, yeah. really tough one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so players who you know are born. Okay, wait. players who started playing poker like 10, 20 years ago who are taught by, I don't know, some random coaches online that, you know, if I have top pair, top <laughs> kicker, I should bet larger and then when I don't, I should see bet smaller kind of stuff. Shit, yeah, bro. it's like, just throw, <laughs> just throw that stuff out of the window because like, it, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so yeah, yeah you, should, you should really think about does it make sense for me to only bet big when I have it and bet small when I yeah, don't? Yeah, to be honest with like these type of hands, like for example, I have a board like <laughs> King 10-4, and I see yeah. bet usually like let's say one third full range. And then yeah. we get like a brick turn. I prefer to check back a hand like King Nine a lot. Mm -hmm. Just because it just works so well as a bluff catch on the river. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just like uh, he it might be also ahead of some of his value range, right? He might just like yeah. bet like ace ten and stuff like that. And you just like win so much. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just really it's just really about how complex you want a strategy to be mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. you manage it. Yeah, best bet is yeah. to just like simplify it for sure. Yeah, a lot of students tell me stuff like, oh, if we exploit, um, don't we win more money? And then my counter question to them is, are you winning money? Because if you're not, then you're the one who's being exploited, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah, yeah until, until you can play a general strategy that actually works, um, then you should you should not go around you know pointing guns at people and just exploiting people when you know obviously you're the guy who's getting shot all the time. So, yeah. Yeah, because it's yeah. it's said in chat like, but it depends on your opponent how he reacts to your sizings too. Of course it yeah. does, but and you can go over like population tendencies, but you can't really know like what is my opponent thinking, right? Yeah. Especially like online when you don't know, and it's especially in like such a big pool. Yeah. Well, actually. You know, it's maybe okay. Maybe it's an interesting time to like bring this. So there was this um like. So let's just like look at this like kind of, um simulation. So mm -hmm. it's a simulation that I made 
to convince people that I was doing the right thing. Um, so let me let me find it. Um, shit, can I find it? Where, where's my stuff? Um, okay, so find the bed size. Right? Okay, and I think okay, it's gonna take a while, but um, I guarantee you it's worth it. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, this whole thing started with you know people asking why betting thirty three percent in position and as the aggressor was a good play. Yeah. And the answer is because it's always tougher to react to. So like you know like um uh, someone saying in chat right that you know it depends on your opponent and how he reacts to sizings. Um. So if you think about like regular boards. Um, you know, it's when you bet sixty percent pot or seventy percent pot, it's really easy. Um, because what your opponent needs to do is just continue with pocket pairs, continue with like bottom pair, middle pair, top pair. He needs to continue with like gut shots, um, you know, over cards kind of stuff. It's really it's just really simple. Everybody can do that. So what I say is like all fishers are capable of calling correctly on on against a sixty six percent bet. But when you start betting 33% or like start over betting, uh, they get kind of lost, right? Uh, yeah. Against the over bet, should I start calling, you know, bottom pair? Uh, then they don't think about, oh, should I turn over a bottom pair into a bluff when you know I face an over bet? You know that that kind of stuff. Um, so it's about reaction, um, and this damn thing isn't loading. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are they like big trees or something? Um, it's like a button versus. Um, What's going on? Can, can I can I see like uh, can you press Control Shift Escape at the same uh, time and show me Task console. Manager so I can like figure it out because I can see that I I can I'm like I can see the matrix you know. <laughs> All right, okay. so let's see. It's like a really really big tree, so that's why it's taking like so long. Do you have like 64 gigs of RAM? Yeah. Okay. You know what? Let me close. Let me close. Yeah, I have 64, but let me close like a uh, bunker and like. Let yeah, me that's up. probably the better idea. Okay. No, but so it I started think... loading in Pio. You don't need to close Pio because it it actually did start loading. I see, like it was loading the RAM. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this oh. one is definitely loading. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. If it's loading, that's fine. This, because this is like the only one that I should be using. Okay. Actually. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Can, can you press uh, Control Shift Escape again so I'm just sure of it? Uh. Oh, there we okay, go. It's loading. It's... Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I am so... Neo. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, if you look at... So, it's a button versus big blind tree. Um, and the flop is king, nine, four. Um, so, you know, the big blind just does a lot of checking, right, at the start. And then, you know, the button should be betting very aggressively. Um, and if, let's say, I bet $7, right? Um, it's really easy for our opponent to react. So, like I was saying, um, our opponent just simply calls, um, you know, any king... Any nine and four, um, and you know, occasional the occasional queen ten that gives a straight jack ten, um, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really standard. There's nothing special. Um, can everybody replicate this? I think er anybody can. Like any fish is able to you know call perfectly. I would say, or play perfectly. They might miss a few check raises, so they might not turn seven four into a check raise. But I would say like in general. Um, they would know how to call Queen 10 off. They would call yeah. Queen suited, yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah, and I was actually look looking for like a hand that they might fold. I, th I think I, yeah. I saw like the Ace three and Ace deuce. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that, yeah. that one. That so this sort of, but this one but it's like very like, very small part of your range. Yeah, precisely. Um, and like maybe Ace six and Ace seven, um, and Ace eight. These are the hands that you know maybe uh even the lousiest fishers might make a mm. mistake and not call them. Um, but it's really like, you know, you can't force a mistake, basically. But if, let's say, you bet $4, um, you know, villain is supposed to be, let's say, tree betting, uh, only raising a hand like 10 7 suited. Um, and he's doing, he's supposed to be doing a lot of, like, check raising at 14%. Um, it's very high. It's something where you don't expect out of the typical poker player. Um, and because of that, then, you know, I think, uh, it's a good strategy overall, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Because you do force him to make mistakes. He might fold a hand like Jack Seven suited. He fold a hand like Ten Seven suited. Yeah. Um, he would start to fold all these hands, and you can see like although you know it's mostly blue, 
but they have a very small portion of red attached to all of them, and these things like really add up. Mm-hmm, Once mm-hmm, it's like mm-hmm. it's like red. They add up to like hand. a few hands, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A few combos for um, sure. Yeah. So this is like the whole point of like you know choosing a sizing that is like the hardest to react, and yeah, this is mm. basically what I was trying to get to. Um, so it's. It's a it's a big tree to explain a simple point, but uh, you get the drift. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It's a, it's a all about like MDF challenge, sort of like in a, not MDF in like the classical way, but what you should be defending in like a GTO yeah. sense. Correct, correct. Yeah, it's exactly it's exactly that. Um, so here, oh wait, so here, yeah. So as play, like I was saying, we just you know bigger place. Oh, it's, it's hard uh, to see the numbers even on my screen. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, as play, like we call the tree bad mm-hmm. and you just like base a bad. So so the first thing I was thinking about is at, we do we ever check race check X here? Like this is something that I was thinking. Um and I wanted to look into. And you know, like you like you mentioned just now, um, is it better to bet a polarized size? Or is it just better to bet small? But in general, I think my strategy would just like to be bet small because I think it's harder to play against, I would say. Um, if I bet a big sizing like $30, I think you know, uh, Villain just basically calls like any single pair above 10s and mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. Uh, folds everything else. Um, but if I bet small, you know, um, it really poses a big challenge because he has to be comfortable calling a hand like pocket 8s, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's really tough, I think, for him. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then on the river is just a really clear shove, and then he's, his call is like I I think like by far really standard because he doesn't have the ace of diamonds, so I think really no excuse. He doesn't block king queen, he doesn't block queen nine, he doesn't block like queen eight, eight nine, all that stuff. So his call is just really standard, and you know most of the simulation is about finding out whether, um, you know whether check raising the flop is better with a mm-hmm. marginal hand, mm-hmm. even though it's a c two, um, it's one of those spots where you know maybe check raising is better. And uh, whether betting the turn and like, you know, maybe it's a spot where I think it's aces should actually have a raising range. I think here in this spot specifically, I think check shoving aces might actually be the right play. I'm not sure, but I th- I think it might. Oh, so yeah, something interesting thing to to look into. Because I think if he shoves aces here, we kind of have to call king ten. I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, so just a little bit of like GTO stuff. Uh, so yeah, um, okay, so here, here's the tree. Yeah, we're like, yeah, 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 getting back to it. You've got like 32 gigs of RAM, right? Um, or 64. Like 60, 64, that's weird that Monker would like not, not let you load like another big, big part of RAM though. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Okay. So, as played, um, we see that you know with aces, um, villain should actually be betting quite large, mm-hmm, here, mm-hmm. which makes sense because aces doesn't block jack x, right? Yeah, and so our opponent good. just has so many hands that just have equity here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so betting small doesn't really accomplish much. Yeah. Hmm. So. I would say like uh, ignoring the strategy. I I, I would say like um, like betting one third is fine. But I would say with aces, I think he should have bet bigger if he wanted to play like a two size strategy. Um. So yeah. And then you know we have jacket suited. So yeah. You know. So yeah, the part about pure call. Racing, it's just a pure call. Mostly I, I because we, I think like we're behind in our range. Yeah. 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 Um. I I think we don't really have much raises, and we can just play it like as a, a pure call strategy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, like even with deuces, I think, uh, yeah, I would just like I think calling is just fine. You know, like um, in these kind of spots where, um, the big, the big blind is tree betting really tight with like aces and kings and stuff, and then you have a set, um, but there's no need to kind of like, be eager to pile the money in because if he has aces, the money is going in like regardless. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. So, um, so we do. Question call. is, how would you balance your check pushing range with aces there? Oh, you mean on a turn? No, I think he means on the flop. Uh, what do you mean check pushing range? Like check raising? Uh, limitless? Question? Question mark? Or did you mean on the turn? Could you explain your question? All right. Meanwhile, while limitless explains this question, we can like 
Okay. So on the Jack, I think, you know, like, so I was saying, like, I think Asus still has to be betting a large portion. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he on he the, means on the trend. He means on the trend. Yeah, okay. So what I was thinking was, like, if he checks Asus, right, and he doesn't have a diamond, um, if we do bet small, does he ever check shelf? Um, well, okay, maybe not as much. Not as much as I was thinking about. But surprisingly, with Kings, he should be check shelving all the time. Yeah. Um, and, queen, and Queens as well, which is kind of surprising. I would, I would think, like, um... Aces would be a check shot because Aces kind of blocks Ace Jack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you can get like a hand like Queens Kings and like even a hand like um, King Ten to call the shot. Um, yeah, so I think so. My original idea was like Aces is a really good check push. Um, whereas like I think Kings and Queens um really just loses a lot to Ace Jack and is really like rough catching at this point. You know. All right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. But as played, um, you know, we I wanted to know whether betting small or betting bigger is better, um, and I think it's a large portion of just like betting small. Um, so with regards to like Jack X, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's really like betting big a lot with Jack X, and then balancing it with really weird um, Ace highs, um, which is kind of weird, you know. Well, it uh, is. It is. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's sort of. I think you're just like blocking ace king here, or like I I, I kind of don't or or d- d- wait d- does opponent check ace jack check jack x a lot on the turn? Um, actually no. Yeah, no, but he does check a lot of like marginal jacks, like you know jack ten. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, well he does check back some king jack and. So he does have some jacks, jacks in his. You know, solvers jacket. like you know, like what lesson I got from like a solver freak. He said, yeah. "Never try to understand the solver. Sometimes it's just like weird, you know. It's just, <laughs> ra- it's just random. Sometimes yeah. it just does weird stuff." Yeah, I would say like if let's say I were to simplify this to a one size strategy, maybe you would see the trend better. Um. So if let's say I simplified this to. Um, something like only bet a big size, right? Yeah, J- Jack Ten. Jack Ten is a boat, by the way. Good, good point in chat. Yeah. It's not marginal at all. Jack Ten with the check. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's a boat. boat. <laughs> okay. So if we think about like check, um, if we only play like betting one size, then um, then it really becomes like we are we are pushing like equity a lot, and then with our really weak hands like nines and eights, we really check a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we still mix in some draws in there, like King Queen. And then with Ace Queen, I think Ace 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 high hands like with two overcuts like tend not to be like bluffs as often, I would say. Um and Ace Queen still can call a bet. So yeah. I think uh all in all, like it's really like just a bunch of weird stuff that's happening. But I think the trend that we can see is like um with Jack X, like villain should be pushing a lot of equity as the out of position player. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I would say Jack X without the King of Diamonds. Yeah, Jack X without wow. the King of Diamonds would be a check more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you do have. Uh, wait, yeah, wait, can we, can we go back there? Yeah. This one? King Jack. Yeah. It, it shows like Jack X with the King of Diamonds gets checked more, I think. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, okay. We yeah. aren't as afraid of. We aren't as afraid of the flush as much, mm-hmm, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah, makes sense. Make sense so, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's one trend that we can pick up on. Um, so yeah, but he checks uh with aces, which he which he does sometimes, and then I did decide to bet small. Um, I would say my overall strategy is to just bet small. Um, if let's say, um, uh, based on EV, our EV is twenty three point two two three. If we lock this thing, mm-hmm. and then just press OK. Um, yeah, it's really close, right? Twenty three point two two three versus. Um, yeah, so it's kind of the same. So I would say that just bet the size, um, the small size. Yeah, you you should harder. always always try to simplify your strategy in general. Yeah, and like addressing chat, because because it's just okay. like easier and a, a lot more accurate actually from from a point of view of uh, your opponent's play. <laughs> yeah, you can play like better GTO when you simplify, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, and then Jack Eight becomes like a bet all the time. And I think the question I wanted to ask myself was like, is check X ever a check? And apparently not. So yeah, 
No, nah, it's just like going full on. It, it, yeah. Like there's there's not much reason to check jack X, especially when our yeah. opponent has like so many over pairs. I think you're yeah, just like yeah. missing two streets of value pretty much from those hands, and it's just sad. Yeah. And it's even like, like ace a, king and stuff like that. But when you have a board with like jack 10 and like 10 10, like apparently like the checks become more significant where you should like check sometimes. Yeah, checking 10s so, yeah. is interesting, but I, I guess our opponent just bets all his jack X combos, and that's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think 10s would be a better like um, check and then hope he completes his straight on the river and then get value there. Yeah, right. I can, I can definitely see why jack 10 would be a check. Because you just want to keep uh, all your bonus bluffs in his range. You get, like, some extra. And you're just blocking a lot of his, like, call range. Yeah. Yeah. You're, right. you're just so, a huge blocker yourself, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, I think uh, that's basically it. Like, that's really nothing special other than, you know, the turn. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know... Another thing I was thinking about was whether he should shove aces, but apparently now I learned that you know aces is always a call, but kings and queens are shoves all the time. Yeah, that's um, interesting. I I'd say maybe it's more about like protection, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I would say like okay, maybe if you shove kings, there's a higher chance like ace ten calls, and then when you shove aces, like king ten doesn't call as much, you know. Um, so. Yeah, 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 I guess. Maybe kings just require more protection mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in, case, in case an ace comes on the river. I think that, that's like the closest margin. Because we are bluffing with a lot of ace x on the turn, aren't we? Right? Yeah. So I yeah, think that, yeah, that could yeah. be like the case. But it, it's just like a, such a small portion of range. I don't think it like matters that much. You're probably yeah. IRL. You're probably not getting that often with kings in this spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Sorry, yeah. man. Uh... This is this has been really really good, by the way. Yeah, I really yeah, enjoyed it. Fun. Thank you so much, chat. Thank sense and fans for coming on stream and teaching you guys how to play poker, pretty much, <laughs> and how to study with bio. Uh, is there any, anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, I think for players who are still playing low stakes, uh, you know, if you don't know where your leaks are, do like take the chance to like look into the poker tracker. And you know, just just put some filters. I think this is something like people don't really do. Like they just look at the graph and just be like, oh, okay, you know. So I I'm not like winning. So like mm -hmm. there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, but most players don't like go the extra step and you know find what's wrong. And um, you can really see like you know, are you playing wrong on the flop, the turn, the river? I think at some point my biggest leak was that I was calling too wide on the river. Um, and then. I think Poker Tracker really helped by like me finding the leak and just adjusting for that. Um, so if you are a player who is really bad at like calling three bets or like just three betting in general, then I I do suggest like you know just um like just check you know uh, pre flop raises any three bet or like four bets and five bets and then just see how well you do in like three bet pots and then you should do this for like every single one of your you know spots that you find that might have leaks and then just address them. You know. Yeah, just try so, to yeah. review that specific uh, scenario. Over and over. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Precisely. Icho in chat says, I know my leaks, but I just don't give a fuck. <laughs> that is definitely not GTO. Man. I always say I'm I'm running bad. No, Icho is like a <laughs> fellow streamer tournament crusher. He's been uh, doing oh, this for yeah, like yeah, many, yeah. many, many years. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I did like watch his stream before. Oh, Icho, you're famous. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, guys. Uh, you, you, no, wait. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to end this. I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> when you're ending to like look smart and make it look natural, you know. But then yeah, I try to yeah. say that. Then you say something. You're like, oh no. It, okay, yeah. Sorry. So I'm not gonna interrupt you anymore. No, nah, it's fine. It's fine. I think. Uh, oh, anyway, I see another question. Like, does Holder Manager have that option? Like, this one, I'm not sure because I don't use Holder Manager. Uh, I, I to to this day, I don't know the difference between Holder Manager and poker tracker but i know for plo players like apparently um holder manager has like a bunch more stuff but um this i have to check out and if it's worth it i'm just gonna buy it but yeah i think uh, yeah that's all for me i think uh all right this has been really really awesome thank you so much for coming in and uh yeah. giving us such knowledge bombs and um i wish if we could do this again that'd be awesome still yeah sure, sure, i'm gonna sure. send you the vod so that uh Maybe you want it for like YouTube purposes, like commercial purposes. That's absolutely fine. Um, okay. And um, good luck at the tables. I don't think yeah. we're gonna need it because 
<laughs> After a point, like poker becomes like just, just, just like not not needed luck because you just play so so well. Yeah. And uh, you're awesome for doing this. So really, really appreciate it. Chad appreciates it. And uh, I hope to uh, talk to you soon. So have a yeah. great time at the tables. And again, thank you for coming right. in and showing us who's boss. GTA <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, man. Right. Have a great yeah. evening. I know it's like late for you already. So appreciate also yeah. like the, the time, time expenditure. And I'll talk to you in Skype soon. All right. Okay. All right. See you. All right. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Again, I have some alerts to play. Um, hold on. Why does this not work? Wait, wait, wait. We got to have it. What? No, no way. No way. No way. I don't have that. I do have that. It should be here. The fuck? Okay, I can put you on screen chat. There we go. Did I see what hand? Easy for Team Pro? No, I didn't. I, I no, wait. I, I saw that. Yeah, I, I did see that. I see that. Uh, I see Easter. I know. I know his hands. <laughs> I know his hands. Yeah, yeah. Which stakes? Which game? He plays like Omaha for like five ten and uh, Nolmit Hold'em for like Nolmit two hundred and Nolmit uh, five hundred. And uh, he played even like higher. I think he played like twenty five fifty, like the biggest that he's played Omaha for. But he's like very, very versed in like both like Nolmit Hold'em and Omaha in general. He's like just a really, really smart guy that he can learn so, so much from. And I, I really, really appreciate the fact that he like came on stream and taught us just like a lot. So now now you can also say, hey, mom, I'm on TV. Anyways, my life don't like really work. So thank you so much, Icho and um, uh, S2P for the sub. And uh, yeah, we're going to, I think we're going to raid Darius. You guys have a great evening. So right after this, you get to see some like Nolma 200. So that's pretty freaking awesome, right? So thank you so much for turning up. You can rewatch the VOD. If you haven't caught like the beginning or the middle or the end, you can just rewatch the VOD entirely on Twitch because it's just going to be, it's just going to be, um, uh, it's just going to be like unmuted, you know, because it's just uh, no music, right? So you can just watch it. And uh, you guys have a great evening. Wait, I'm, I'm not leaving you. I'm just like going to sign off for now. See you guys tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be on tomorrow and Sunday for like tournaments and stuff. Uh, Don comments and everything. And yeah, you guys are pretty freaking awesome. So thank you so much for being here. And I'll send you to a very, very worthy host. So I hope you appreciate his presence. Say hello from me. And uh, also, yeah, thanks for dropping by and making me laugh each other. That was pretty fucking fun. <laughs> yeah, so mwah, have a great evening. Bye-bye. And uh, sense has, says hello to you. Bye. Okay, so I think ace queen with a heart just kind of always bets. I do think we need like a small amount of check backs on this board, but.